On the surface, it doesn't look too bad, but there are a few things to fix. This is a rusty hole, and um, so is this. I don't really need this extra grip on my chassis. And see this rear cross member? It's been replaced by someone in the past, who was drunk. Or perhaps going for the rear ended by a truck look, because they didn't exactly put it on straight. So, I don't know, redoing the rear cross member is a big job. All because it looks like it's tucked in at the bottom? I don't think it bothers me enough to justify the hassle of fixing it. cross member. If you look closely here you can see the two layers, the inside one being the original chassis and this outside layer presumably being the sleeve that went over it. So I'm going to clean both ends of the chassis up, clean the outrigger up so we have one layer of good steel to work with and then we'll devise some sort of plan to put it all back together. As it turns out, there was quite a bit of rot to cut out, especially where the last guys had overlapped the repair panels with the original chassis. The top of these chassis rails are pretty flat. Land Rover were known for their precision engineering. What matters here is that the body lines up when we're finished. And the rear tub actually sits on these three pads here. Three on each side. So these solid bars I've got here, I'm going to use those to hold everything. But I'm not going to use these for any kind of alignment. You can see I'm hanging the rear cross member from the support bars, just to hold the weight while I shuffle things around. Perfect. Basically finished. The tub sits here. It has rails underneath it that just sit on these six pads. So the trick of this operation is to make sure that when the tub is sitting on the six pads, that the mounting holes in the tub and the mounting holes in the rear cross member are at the same height. And it's hard to get a direct measurement on exactly what that distance should be. So it's a little bit fudgy. Front to back is no problem. I just have to put it back in the same place. And I can exactly measure that before and after with a tape measure. The Land Rover service manual is kind of helpful. Land Rover does provide chassis measurements. But the measurements are to some random point from an imaginary line that I had to transfer via the top of the chassis through Solihull. 
It was an exercise, but that's about it. The short answer is that I measured the reverse situation on the underside of the tub. And the result is... 17 millimetres. So using a straight edge on the chassis, I projected the level of the pads out to the holes in the tabs, and measured stuff with a ruler. Then I jammed bits of metal in between my support bars and the crossmember, until the numbers on the ruler were right. Easy. I think this is obvious, but let me just point out that this is the hard way to replace a rear crossmember. If the rear crossmember was straight and reliable before I started, but say it needed replacing because of rust, I would be positioning everything with a jig, not by measurement. This gaping wound is what we're left with. From here on out it's pretty easy, I just have to fill that hole in. And the plan is to fill that hole in, so I end up with a shape something like this. Easy, let's go. Ok, let's talk about what I've done here. There are a few ways I could have attacked this. I could have replaced an entire section of the chassis. That's probably going a little over the top. Second, I could have replaced each side as one large panel. All else being equal, that's probably the best way to carry out the repair. But as you can see, that's not what I did. I went with option 3. Many patches. I'm not really concerned about strength. The original chassis rails are made from 2mm thick steel. This is an older replacement rear cross member, and the rails sticking out from it are 3mm thick. As are all of my patches. That's significantly more meat than the original chassis. So the patches and welds between them shouldn't be my weak point. The weld between the 3mm plates and the original 2mm chassis is the joint that concerns me most. Working in my favour is the fact that the connection is Z-shaped in all cases. All that to say, ultimate strength was not my main consideration. The reason I went with small patches is because I'm more concerned about getting completely lost. I started with a chassis that was more or less fine, and there's a real risk that if I cut big chunks out of it, I might not be able to get back. And then I'll be up the creek with a chopped up chassis heading straight for the scrapyard. It just seems safer to leave as much of the original chassis as possible in place. At least, that's what I thought at the time. For positive grip and traction when the going is tough. This is... Land Rover. Now that the chassis rails are tacked back together on three sides, I feel comfortable removing the temporary braces.
I'm only tacking the top pieces in for now. In fact, I'm leaving everything only tacked for now. I'll be test fitting the tub before buzzing everything together for good. Right now the tub isn't available for me to do that, so let's move on to something else. A really common trouble spot, the bottom corner of the rear cross member. While the chassis was up on its side, I noticed a little crusty patch. I'm assuming it's just dry flaking dirt. This is the underside of the chassis rail. The cross member sort of slides over the end of the rails, so there's an overlap. The way this is constructed, the chassis rail ends about here, so any water inside the chassis is of course going to run between these two pieces. Also, you can see the vertical face of the chassis rail in here, so the hole's a little off. I'm only really pointing this out so we can laugh at the guy who almost missed a 3 inch wide target. <laughs> <laughs> Here's everything cut away. You can see there is still a potential rust trap here, but it seems fine, and I'm not going to completely reconstruct everything. I am going to partly close the gap with weld though, just the bottom half so that any water that happens to be sitting in here won't capillary up into the gap. I don't want to weld all the way across, because water can still get in here, 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 in fact all around. If moisture can get in anyway, I'd rather leave it so that air can at least move through and dry it out. I'm replacing the two overlapping pieces from the bottom with one nice piece of 3mm plate. No more water trap. And I didn't film the other side, but yes, I carried out the same repair on the other side as well. It was probably okay to leave as it was, but I didn't know that until I cut into it. Let's deal with these rusty holes. The better way to do this would be to hack the whole crusty outrigger off and start from fresh. But my measurements for the rear cross member were taken from here, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm most concerned about getting completely lost. So you can see, I'm trying to remove the bad metal without having to cut the tab right off. But that was quite annoying, so despite everything I just said, I cut it off. I did take careful measurements first though. After all that, I can confirm that the tab is right where the old one was. The holes are at exactly the same height, 
so I should still be able to measure off it if necessary. The passenger side wasn't as bad, but it still needed repairing. Next repair. I'm assuming the original one rusted away and then somebody came along and replaced it with this nice piece of tread plate. Which is fine, it's doing the job. But while I have such easy access, I'm going to go ahead and replace this with something more appropriate. Now look, I get it. I'm not here to be hard on a guy. Let's just say, I think there's room for improvement. Things looked like they were going well. I guess his welder broke here. And then he decided to keep the water out with rust and dirt from there on. Oh cool, another hole. Look at all the crud. That's not rust. Well, I'm sure some of it is. It's mainly road grime with a hint of dried sheep poo. Just crud that's settled in the low point of the chassis. This is not welding instruction, because I'm a chump, not a welder. But let me flex on you and show off my trusty old welding machine. I purchased this with my first ever Christmas bonus. Who knew that's why they were paying me so little during the year? Anyway, the welder lacks some of the fancy features of newer machines, but it works. I like to weld on 6. No 7. In terms of wire feed, I think these numbers on the inside are supposed to be a guide that roughly matches the power setting. But they don't. I decided to go with a replacement outrigger. Potentially I could have made up my own, but these really aren't that expensive, even for me down here in the Antipodes. In my case, I think I'm going to hack this back flange off. It's not really doing anything for me. I understand why it would be useful if you were having to fit this under the vehicle. But for me, I have access all the way around, so I may as well get rid of this extra water trap.
The tank hangs between two outriggers. This is the rear outrigger, which also happens to be the outrigger that we just patched up with the fixing tab on top. And I can see in the outline of the dirt exactly how the tank used to sit. So I line it up as it was. Looking at the front of the tank, you can see the holes in the new outrigger do line up well enough to get a bolt through. But I'm right at one end of the adjustment range. For the sake of making it even more better, I took a few extra minutes to cut the tack welds and move it over another couple of millimetres. This next repair wasn't on my original list. I noticed that this mounting tab feels suspiciously bulgy. And on closer inspection, I'm not surprised. The tabs are welded on three sides. Crucially, they aren't welded in behind here, along the top. So they are buckets. Rust buckets. Well, I'm not sure how bad the rust actually is. But I've already gone ahead and made new tabs anyway. So let's just hack the old ones off and see what's underneath. I almost had a moron moment here. Let me quickly mark the tab locations before I cut them off. Look at these two chunks of rust that came out. You can see the bulging in the back of the cross member. Because of course the rust being much less dense than the steel it's replacing has deformed the steel around it. I think underneath this driver's side tab is going to be the worst. Of course I'll have to patch this. For whatever reason this side of the chassis is more rusty. Let's see what the other four look like. The other four areas are all pretty much like this one. They look a little crusty, but I can't feel any kind of hollow or pitting on this side. For whatever reason, it seems like the brackets rusted a lot more than the cross member itself. I guess the chemical reaction was forced more towards rearward facing surfaces because of the sheer speed that this vehicle travels at. I'm going to clean all of these up with the grinder right now, and afterwards we'll see where we are. But first, I'll patch up this driver's side end. As well as the rust beneath the tab, there are a couple of holes around where the mud flap attached. The metal below where the other four tabs were is actually pretty good. A little bit of light pitting, but nothing that justifies cutting chunks out. I'm very lightly tacking the tabs in place for now. I do want to get them attached to the chassis, so they're done and I can move on. But the rear cross member probably isn't going to be in exactly the right place, and if necessary, I'll move these tabs to compensate. This last little job is not actually a rust repair. These front bulkhead outriggers are replacements. Probably a long time ago. The workmanship looks pretty good. But whoever did it didn't bother to remake the braces that should run across this gap. When I say should, I don't think it really matters that the last guys left them out. 
I mean, if your chassis is stretching that much, your face has probably already met the vehicle's unfortunate negative 5000 ANCAP safety rating. But I guess they're supposed to be there, so I may as well replace them. And now we arrive at the moment of truth. Everything that needs to be repaired is tacked in place. It's time to test fit the tub. Okay, let's do a viewer poll. Betson, what do you reckon? Will the tub fit? Are the measurements right? Dicks. Well, there it is sitting on the chassis, and I don't think it's going to fall off, so that's something. Enough romping around the bush. I know how this pans out, and the story is not going to fit in the last few seconds of this video. So I'll see you next time.